Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we've got everybody muted on this call. We're going to cover a lot in the next probably half hour, 40 minutes. Um, you're going to have a lot of questions. I want to see your faces, so keep turning on those cameras. Let, let's take this time where we're socially disconnected and socially distancing and connect through Zoom. So definitely turn on those cameras. It is wonderful to see you guys. Hello, hello, and happy Thursday. Um, today we're covering a couple things. We're covering how quick the world is changing. Uh, we're covering uh, what our stance is going to be for open houses and showings in general. And then we're going to talk about pivoting to a virtual world and how to host a virtual open house. We're actually going to do a demo. Uh, I'm going to pretend this office is a home, and I'm actually going to walk you through how I would do a virtual open house. Um, after we go through each section, I'm going to pause. So after we go through the first section, I'm going to pause and see what questions you have. The best way to ask a question is going to be the chat box. Emily's going to be monitoring the chat box. So if you scroll your mouse down onto the bottom um, and, and open up that little bubble window. Uh, can we open that up so we can see here? Uh, you, you'll see that on the right-hand side of your screen most likely. So, so put a question in on the chat. If you have a burning desire to ask a question, raise your hand. So if you go over your name in that chat, chat box, you have the ability to raise your hand. Um, and and uh, that will allow us to unmute you for you to ask a question. So we'll do our best to, to, to moderate the hand raising, but that chat box will be a great way to, uh, to ask questions as well. All right, that being said, the world is changing fast. With that, the way we do business also has to change and evolve. And I, for one, am super excited on the opportunity how we can take technology into a whole new level to get home shown uh, and sold. Imagine, imagine this for a second. Imagine a world where you only physically show a house one time to put it under contract. Imagine a world where we only physically show a house one time in order to go under contract. So what we're trying to do here is create a world where you create some energy around a virtual open house and, and you, you, you expose the home, you, you market the open house like we always do. You market it on GSMLS, you market it on realtor.com, you market it on Zillow, uh, you put it on your website, you do an event ad through command to market it uh, to your database, to your Facebook friends, to your sphere and to the community. So you spend this time and energy grading a funnel to all come to an open house between 2 and 4 p.m. on Sunday or between 5 and 7 p.m. on Thursday or between 11 and 1, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. on a Tuesday. It no, no longer matters what time of day you do an open house. You could do them seven days a week, 15 hours a day. Do doors are always open. And people come and they tune into you virtually. So, so, so what I did today was I took MichaelJBrand.com. That's one of the URLs that I have. Go, go try it, by the way, MichaelJBrand.com. Log into that. That takes you right to my Facebook page. So you can create a, an open house URL for your business. BebKalinkasOpenHouse.com. Put that rider on your signs, point it to your Facebook page, your Facebook business page, and, and set up face, Facebook Live streams uh, during that window. So let's just say your open house is two to four. Well, from two to 2.15, from two to 2.15, um, do we just lose something? All right, please don't share your screen. That can be awkward. Um, two to 2.15, you're gonna walk them through a tour like I'm going to show you. Um, and then they can private message you, raise their hand. And then from 2.15 to 2.30, you could do a private deployment. Look a little bit more at the kitchen, look a little bit more at the bedroom, look a little bit more at the basement, and, and take them through the house that way until we get to the point where they say, hey, we're really interested. Here's our pre-approval. We're ready to put in an offer. Let's see it vis uh, 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 physically now. And then you take that person through that showing at that time when they're ready to write a contract. So I'm going to pause for a second here. That first section was kind of creating a vision for you on what a, a virtual open house and a virtual showing can look like. So before I move on to the next step, how are we doing? Do you have any questions on that picture? Do you have any question on that vision? I'm not seeing anything in the chat box. So I'm gonna keep moving forward. Kelly's raising her hand. <laughs> There's actually a way to press the button, raise your hand, unmute Kelly for a second. Hi guys. Hey Kel. Is there somewhere in the listing 
where we can make notes that there's a virtual tour available for this house or are we not allowed to do that because of MLS putting our own information in it? Is there a way to do that for the well, website? Well, 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 typically with like MLS, for instance, you could schedule the open house and make some notes in there. So, you know, we're going to still kind of pay attention to the MLS and what they'll allow us to do. But typically you could do notes. Uh, we're going to put it right, you know, get a sign writer to say virtual open house, things like that. Um, I've currently sent messages to the board and to the MLSs if they can modify and allow us to kind of note that it's virtual. So right now you would schedule it and then you would put in the notes section of the open house uh, that, it's, that it's virtual. So again, that's gonna be a work in progress, Kelly. The MLSs aren't quite equipped to this today. My hope is that they make some changes in the, in the very near future to allow us to do it. Um, I, uh, uh, how do you buy your URL? Go to godaddy.com. Godaddy.com, a URL costs about nine bucks a year. Uh, and you can register as many URLs as you want. I've got about 40, 45 of them. Um, I think I saw someone, would you go to the house for each virtual showing or record it once? Matt Ronan, good question. Um, I, for, the, for the virtual open house, I would go to it for that. If you record that, save that video. If someone's interested, you can steer them to that general video. Um, and then if they want a more personalized showing, it's only you going to the house versus 10, 20, 30 buyers. Here's the issue with public open houses. The, the governor in the, in the country have already said they want to restrict any gatherings of 10 or more. I saw, I saw an article last night that the state is actually going to crack down on any large gather, gathering in residences. Uh, towns are starting to say, uh, I know the whole town of Metuchen, I believe her, earlier, put a moratorium on public open houses. They're not allowing them anymore. So we're going to see more and more of that. Metuchen announced that earlier today. So, um, so, so I think... It, Right now, the virtual open house is a quick way to do it, to get it done this weekend. I think as we get in the coming weeks, we're going to explore different video options to make our videos much more robust than they've ever been, uh, to be able to send out these video links to give people the, the ability to walk through open house in a different way. Um, how do we raise our hand? If you're in the chat box and, and you, and you kind of go over your name, you've got these little buttons next to your, your name, and there's a... There should be a little thing that highlights raise hand there. So, um, and again, Emily will make a comment into the chat box to give you more directions on that. Um, I wish by you, how do we you raise your hand? We're working on that. I think in the same spot, this is Bo Chevalier. I think in the same spot, you can add seller disclosure. You can add a virtual tour link. So again, um, you can kind of put a, a video link in there. I would make those links and put them to your YouTube channel. Start building your own YouTube channel and you can link those there. Um, so can you help with the questions here? Uh, Amanda, yes, Matterports are something we're going to start looking into again. Uh, Matterport is a great technology with some great virtual tours and, and video tours associated with it. It's a little expensive, but, uh, but, but Matterport's got some really great technology, and I think they're going to feast in this market. Um, what I'm going to show you today is just down and dirty. I'm showing you today my phone, <laughs> a Facebook Live. We're going to do it here uh, via Zoom. Uh, just a down and dirty way to do it at no cost <laughs> with technology you already have. So I'm not going to get into fancy. Ian is right. You can't brand these video tours that you're linking to the MLS. So uh, again, what we're talking about today is a virtual tour that you're going to connect to your Facebook through a Facebook Live. So that way you don't have to worry about branding and linking or any of that kind of thing. Um, so let's just, you good? So, so next part of this is let's talk for a second. Now, now this next conversation is for anyone on the line that is from Morristown, Mountain Lakes, Roxbury, Basking Ridge, Massapequa Park, New York, or Trumbull, Connecticut. So for those four market centers, this is, this is our policy moving forward. If you're not from one of those market centers, please check with your broker, check with your team leader, check with your OP what your market center's policy are. But for our four market centers, uh, we're positioning it like this. Let this be the last weekend you even offer a seller a public open house. Um, do not commit to a public open house after this weekend. Um, encourage the seller to take this weekend's open house to the virtual format that we're discussing today. But after this weekend, please don't commit to a, an open house. Two things will be happening. Number one, I do think the towns are gonna come down uh, in the early part of next week and put a moratorium on open houses. 
Um, and if they don't, uh, we will be communicating our policy on Monday or Tuesday, but our policy will likely be no public open houses. So please don't overcommit to open houses on any listings you're talking to or listing appointments you're going on. Again, like I've been saying all week, the most important thing for us is your safety, your health, the safety of your family and their health, the safety of your buyers and sellers and their health, and then the safety and health of the general community. So um, while some people might not like this position or might not be happy with it, um, I'm tasked to make decisions for the health and well-being of, of thousands of people, not just two or three. And uh, we're going to err on the side of conservative, uh, if anything else. So, so if you're talking to sellers today about this weekend and they're saying, no, we want to do the public open house, you promise it to us, you're going to respond to what the virtual open house can look like. Um, and, and they say, no, we still want it. You can do that this Sunday. You can do that this Sunday. A couple things on that. Number one. We will be sending out shortly a COVID-19 acknowledgement. This is an acknowledgement form that your seller has to sign um, by the end of the day tomorrow if you're going to do a Sunday open house. The, the market center staff will be looking at all open houses scheduled on the GSMLS for Sunday. Um, and, and we're gonna make a list and we will need a copy of this acknowledgement back before you can host that public open house. Pretty much what the acknowledgement says, um, yeah, I'm just looking at some of these chats that are coming in. Uh, I'm gonna to come to this chat in a second. Um, th this pretty much says they acknowledge there's a pandemic going on right now. They acknowledge that there is risk in opening their houses to people. Uh, and in essence, they release, protect, hold us harmless if someone that comes through there gets sick. Um, let me share with you why the conservative approach. I got a call on, uh, on Monday, we had uh, a, a, an open house held not far from the New Rochelle area uh, this past Sunday, 31 people through the open house, 31 through the open house. We found out Monday that one of the guests at the open house was showing, six, showing symptoms of the coronavirus. And, and the, the broker of that office called and said, what the heck do we do? Um, and so so the, we expect to see that a lot in the coming weeks. So we're trying to make sure that uh, we're being safe and responsible. I'm gonna pause for a second. So <coughs> Questions. I see Ian Wolf with a hand raised. Ian, do you have a question? Is Ian unmuted? Can you find? Ian, if we can't unmute you, go to your bottom left of your screen and unmute. Uh, am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. What's your okay, question? so here's my here's my question. So in the past, um, you know, obviously our our focus needs to be our clients, and we want to try to get their homes sold. In the past, you know, an agent might call me and say, "Hey, look, I, I'm busy. Can you show my people the home? I'm out of town." And I'll always say. As a matter of policy, I do not, um, I'm not present with other people's clients without a representative there. But with the circumstances of going forward, do you think that we should maybe be a little more lax on that? Because my attitude is, if I got people who want to get in my client's house and the agent can't make it, because I can't do open houses and I, I can't do a lot of other things, I'm willing to show them the house. Yep, yep. And, 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 if that's okay, then what kind of precautions or things should we take to make sure we don't have an ethics issue? So, so, so let, let, let's, let's, let me cover one thing first to your comment. One, I was on a strategy call this morning with 40, 40 franchise owners in three states. Uh, and one of the discussions we had, Ian, was um, perhaps we become more purposeful now, where in each of your listings, you say showings for this home is on Thursday between 2 and 4 p.m. And the, 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 the seller disinfects their home, they leave the property, and, and they, they make their home available for showings between two and four. And maybe you're there, maybe the brand X agent is there, and, and you set specific appointments. Buyer A is two to 220. Buyer B is 225 to 250. Buyer C is, is, is 255 to, to 320. And you bring them in in 20 minute increments. That way we can bring, if we have five, six showings in a week, we bring five or six showings all through in a three hour period, disinfect it, the seller can then disinfect it and, and take their home. So, so that could be one strategy. Well, that's video about virtual open houses. 
Do you know Michael or somebody? Wait, 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 wait. Judy, we're going to mute you for a second. Um, because we've got 180 people on the call, we're, we're going to ask to acknowledge each speaker first so we can answer your question and then move on. So let me finish up Ian's question before we get to the next one. So, so, so Bev is highlighting, you know, Ian's question because you term ethics might be more of an agency question, ethics question. <coughs> Her. Yeah, so, so, so Ian, the, the, the feeling is if it's clearly defined that you're helping the other agent, you're clearly a seller's agent, they're a buyer's agent. Um, I think if it's clearly defined, and I think we're all working together in the sharing economy to, uh, to support each other. So I don't think there's an ethics issue involved here at all. All this is more about safety and health. So Ian, did I answer your question? I'm mute Ian again. I just want to make sure I, I, I wrap that up for going to the next one. Unmute. Uh, Ian, we're trying to unmute you, Ian. Uh, I, I just wanted to make sure that if we're going to do something like that, there wasn't some specific policy you wanted us to follow so that we were in compliance. But I mean, otherwise, I think it makes a lot of sense to try to avail any opportunity we have to get a home shown. Yep, yep. So, so let, let, let me finish walking through uh, how we're going to handle a public showing for this weekend, and then we'll come back to some of these questions. So, so step number one, they want to do a public open house. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of brokers out there across the board that are canceling their open house programs. So we are not unique. <laughs> um, I think if people don't, by next week, everyone will. So we don't have a, a, a disadvantage competitively. So for this weekend, um, you're going to get this, 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 um, this acknowledgement signed by the seller where they understand the risk. You're gonna go open up the open house. You're gonna put a sign on the door that we're in the process of creating that's a notice to the buyer of what we're gonna require for them to, to come through and view that home. That notice is gonna say, we're showing this home one person or one couple at a time. Um, if the door is currently locked, we are currently showing the home. Uh, if you would like to view this home, when, you, when, when I welcome you to the home, please be ready to give me a copy of your driver's license, which you could take a photo of it right now and text it to my cell phone number, 908-625-5807. Um, and and, uh, and uh, be prepared to give me your, your photo ID and your cell phone number, um, and I will take you through the house one at a time. We're going, you're going to want to have things in that open house that include some type of disinfectant. You're going to want to have booties and you're going to want to have rubber gloves, um, both for yourself and for the person that you're taking through the home. So all of this is going to be us showing what we're doing to, to make sure we're keeping the home safe and people protected. The Crawford Home Selling Team did a great post on Facebook last weekend, which we'll share with everybody, on the steps they're doing, the precautions they're having to make sure they provide a safe, the safest environment we possibly can. So again, we're going to have an acknowledgement signed by the seller, an acknowledgement signed by the buyer, a copy of a driver's license, and, and, uh, and the cell phone number. So you might be asking, why the copy of the license? Why to that degree? Well, if you've been watching, um, and, and the cases are doubling every day in all of our market areas. I think we're up to nine deaths in New Jersey right now. Um, no, I, I was told nine earlier. It's, it's as many as nine right now. So, so um, why, where would I go? So, so, so why are we doing the photo IDs? Why are we doing the telephone numbers? Uh, they have this process. If someone gets contaminated, they do what's called a contact uh, interview or a contact assessment. They go into that home. They get a list of every person and every place that person has been for the last two weeks. Um, and then within 24 to 48 hours, they go out and interview those families in those places. So if the person says, oh, I was at an open house at 123 Main Street, they're going to call the realtor and say, do you have a list of everyone that attended this open house? Um, the, 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 the health departments are going to want that in order to go out there. And us as a broker are going to have an obligation, um, um, are going to have an obligation to also make sure we call those people to let them know they may have been exposed. So I'm going to stop for a second and answer a few questions. Um, well, let, let's unmute Judy for a second. Uh, Judy, I know you had a question. Let me let you answer. You're unmuted, Judy. What do you got? Judy Rifkin, are you there? Uh, yeah, no, I didn't have a question, Michael. Ooh. Okay, we'll mute you again. I'm looking at the chat box. Um, uh, during, oh, can you please email us a list of the new guidelines? Fedra, yes. We're going to send you guidelines. We're going to send you attachments. Um, you, 
guys, we're going to email the living daylights out of you this week into next week. All of the emails that are essential for you to read are going to come from me. So the, I promise you the only emails I'm sending out to you are communication on policies, communication on safety, communication on business operations. So if you want to ignore Dylan's email or Rich Cummings' email or Rich Turnbull or Luis's or Sean's emails or Ali's email, ignore their emails as much as you want. Love you guys. If you see an email from Michael Brand at kw.com, please open it because it's important. Um, uh, why are we still having open houses this weekend? This should already be in place. We're not complying with government guidelines. Jane, I, I completely agree with you. Um, again, our recommendation is to not have broker open houses. Um, unfortunately, the challenge we have is some people have already promised it. Uh, they've already gotten things like, well, this was part of your marketing plan. I'm going to cancel the listing if I don't. It's not fiduciary responsible. So when you look at the federal guidelines, the federal guidelines talk about how many people can come together in a gathering in one location. And that's why we're limiting it to a controlled open house with only two people at a time in the home to comply to all federal rules and guidelines. Again, after this weekend, I don't want to hear someone say you committed an open house because I've already said here, do not commit to any open houses this, after this weekend uh, because it is very likely that we will not be able to do any open houses moving past this week. Um, maybe a dumb question, never a dumb question, Lou. Uh, if we don't have hand sanitizer to offer, if you don't have hand sanitizer to offer, then don't have an open house. I mean, if you can't, if you don't have Lysol or bacterial wipes or Clorox wipes or hand sanitizer, then you're not in a position to provide a safe and healthy environment right now. Um, so keep looking. The Market Center, we're constantly looking. Um, we're constantly looking for, for these items. If I ever find a place where I could buy these items in bulk, we'll buy them, bring them into the Market Centers and make them available to you. Um, will you send the buyer acknowledgement? Yes, Ian. We've got the seller acknowledgement right now. We're, we're converting it to a buyer acknowledgement. We're also working on an addendum to all of our listing agreements. Um, that, that if you're signing a listing this weekend, we're gonna want the seller out of the gate to sign an addendum like this just for general showings. Many states are adopting an addendum to go to their contracts. California, Georgia, I know New Jersey's talking about it where we may be adding addendums to contracts in the next few days that will allow a buyer or seller to cancel a contract right after the closing date if they are diagnosed with a COVID-19 virus. So there's, there's a lot of legal documents being created right now, um, and we're doing our best to get them out to you as quick as possible. If you are a new agent supposed to shadow three open houses, what should we do now? Um, don't worry about it. The purpose of shadowing open houses is, is to put yourself in position to do open houses later. Um, you're not gonna be able to do open houses later. So if you're scheduled to shadow an open house, talk to that agent. If, if they don't need you, I would prefer you not to shadow that. Um, Sorry, join late. Will we get acknowledgments? Yes, you will get the acknowledgments. Where can we get gloves and hand sanitizers? Check, check your local supermarkets, check your local stores. Um, do whatever you can to find them. We've got a small supply here, but not really a whole lot. Um, so, so do, you should be looking at every store. These supplies come in and go out very fast. Let's see what you can to find these things. Um, I, I, if you know anyone that owns a restaurant, um, I would ask if they've got extra uh, gloves that you can buy from them. They're, they're greatly restricted uh, and may be willing to sell you a box of gloves because their businesses have changed quite a bit. Um, so, uh, sorry, but I missed the part about an actual virtual open house. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to real play a virtual open house in just a few minutes. That's what we're going to next. Right now, we talked about the vision of what we're doing and trying to create a virtual open house concept. Then we talked about what our policy is going to be in a few minutes. I'm going to break off with my cell phone and actually take you through how I would do a virtual open house. Um, I'm not going to answer questions on alcohol. Um, is that addendum for all contracts or those moving forward? The addendum we have right now is specifically for open houses this weekend. We're also modifying this to be a general seller addendum and a general buyer addendum. So, uh, within the next few days, you'll have an addendum um, that you can have your active buyers, your active listings, and any new listing sign. Christina Duncan just bought a bunch of gloves on Amazon. Take a look. Uh, is there going to be a protocol for showings? Uh, we're, we're talking about that right now. Uh, again, this concept of condensing all of your showings for a week into a window to limit the number of times the sellers have to disinfect the house. 
Um, many companies are already canceling showings. They're canceling open houses. So um, right now we're focused on open houses today because it's Thursday. Uh, we will have some messages going out. If you can't provide a sanitary way to show a home, then, then please don't show a home. If you're gloves, disinfectant, you got to make sure you can provide a safe and healthy environment. What if your seller has tenants? Um, do tenants sign as well as their occupants? Y yeah. If the seller has a tenant, we probably need a tenant acknowledgement. Here's what's going to happen to that. Um, the tenants aren't going to, as it is, it's very difficult to show a house uh, occupied by tenants. Uh, let's get back to you with a tenant question because uh, this is probably going to hinder you showing the house of a tenant. All the more reason why you may want to consider doing a real good video of that house so people can look at the video and limit the showings greatly. Um, uh, so, so a new agent can do the virtual open house. Uh, yes, as long as the agent is, is willing to work with you. Uh, yes. How do we promote the, the virtual open house to people that want to see the property? How do we target the right people? Um, this could be something we continue to talk about in the coming weeks, Christopher. Um, virtual open house, again, finding a way to put it on the MLS, put it on Zillow, put it on uh, realtor.com, those third party sites, put it on your Facebook page create an event ad in Facebook where you get at least target people in that geographic area. Um, it's not you, getting a sign rider, getting a sign rider view a virtual open house at uh, michaeljbrand.com. So that's the best way you're going to be able to target people that are interested. If they ride past the home and they see the rider with the URL, uh, they can message you that way. Text me at this number to, to get an invite to the virtual open house. Start making virtual open house part of your marketing plan. Um, where do we get riders from? Claudia, uh, signs are out, fast signs. Uh, you can order them online. Right now, I'm going to suggest you guys use one URL for all of your virtual open houses. Um, just because, John Lee, we're shutting your screen down. Um, that way, you're not ordering 15 different sign riders. Again, if I had michaelbrandopenhouse.com and I got 20 riders in bulk, it's going to be cheaper. And I can put that in all my listings. Um, hey, guys, be careful. Some people keep hitting uh, share screen and you're, you're, you're pulling the screen off of me onto your personal computer, which could be awkward. Um, so, so good. Um, so, uh, so, again, that, that's my thought on riders. A market on next door, without a doubt. What's the difference between a virtual open house and a normal video tour? Sounds catchy. It is catchy, John. I invented it. Um, uh, or Joe. Um, here's the difference between a virtual open house. Virtual open house is an event, it's an experience. So why don't we do this? Let's jump off real quick. We're going to do a virtual open house right now of our office. Uh, as Emily gets my phone ready, I'm going to pull my little Mr. Rogers. Pull my little Mr. Rogers. I'm going to take my booties and I'm going to put my booties on right now. Hello, friends. Today, we're going to talk about a virtual open house. Um, and, and yeah, just mute one of those for a second. Um, and I, 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 give us a second while we stop that. That one needs to be stopped. She muted me. I just unmuted myself so I can finish getting ready. Dylan, do you have a comment on virtual open houses? Yeah. Uh, yep. 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 So again, we'll have classes on how to embed the video and command. So uh, I'm going to shift to the virtual open house. I know we're echoing. Sorry. I think we fixed it. Um, Mr. Who is Mr. Rogers? Oh, I got to love it. I feel old when that happens. Um, I'm going to shift to my other camera and do the virtual open house. While I'm doing that, I'm not going to be able to see the chat box. Um, so if you do have a question, uh, start loading up the chats and we'll look at that when we come back. So the virtual open house will take about three to five to seven minutes. Um, and then we're going to come back here for any questions you have. So give me one second and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Hello, everybody. How are you? Thank you very much for visiting uh, our virtual open house today. Uh, we are providing this environment so you can come and see this property at 44 Whippany Road um, from the safety, security, and, uh, and, and environment of your own home. Um, don't wipe your nose, Chip, you're killing me. Uh, so, so you will see, uh, I am wearing gloves and booty, just be able to keep uh, the home of my seller uh, as, as safe and healthy as possible. So I'm gonna take you through a quick tour of the home right now. And uh, do me a favor, if you see something you like and you would like to schedule a private virtual showing, uh, I'll be available for the next two hours in order to, to, to show you more details on this home. Just private message me at facebook.com forward slash Michael J. Brand. Uh, you can friend me there private message me there, and then I'm happy to schedule uh, a virtual showing for you in just the next few minutes. So let's take a walk, come on this way. So as you can see, this home comes with its own receptionist. Her, her name is Joanna, and we love her. Um, so you can see this beautiful foyer of this home has this uh, wonderful laminate flooring, uh, has its own reception desk in this beautiful home, and uh, we love Joanna too. Um, and then we've also got a training calendar in this home that you can see whenever you want. This home comes complete with two uh, client presentation rooms. That one is being occupied by uh, Mr. Holmquist right now. And uh, from the client presentation rooms, we come into this area where in this home, we call this the Keller Cafe, where, where friends and family can come and sit. Please limit it to 10 people or more. Um, um, what's the link to see him? Again, we're, we're not doing the link just now. I'm just showing you how I would do it with a typical, a typical tour. So this is uh, the living room area and then the kitchen area that is available for all of your meals. You will see there's stainless steel appliances, a stainless steel Samsung refrigerator. Uh, I would highlight any of the features of the kitchen that are available here. I would then take them for a walk through the rest of the house. I would show them things like the, uh, the, the, the phone booths that when we have agents occupying offices, they can use those. I would show them things like the, uh, the bullpen area that agents can occupy whenever they want. Uh, I'm actually gonna switch this back. As I'm showing the home uh, in a virtual open house, I'm gonna occasionally come back to a selfie view. That way people can see that I'm here and, and, and see me face to face. So I'm gonna constantly rotate back in between. My sound's on okay, right? Good. Uh, so then I'm gonna then go back and switch and I'm gonna show things like the master bedroom, which is often occupied by our team leader, Sean Chaconis. I'm gonna go and show them some of the other bedrooms of the house. This is bedroom number two, and perhaps I'll show them how bedroom number two is uh, used by Dylan Bryan, our Director of Agent Services and Technology. During this, I might even share perhaps some room dimensions. While you can't see it, this room is about 10 by 12 with, uh, with, with plush Berber carpeting. Uh, so, so as I'm going through, I'm gonna talk about some of the features of the rooms. Oh, hey, look at that, see, smart man, he's coming in with a Clorox wipes to open doors, because that's how we roll, baby, that's how we roll. So, so again, I'm gonna switch back. So as I go through and show room by room, as I show different rooms of the house, I'm gonna constantly come back and reconnect personally and visually, so that way they see me again. You know, as, and that's gonna give me some feedback there. So if a client is supposed to, if a client is supposed to, if, if a client is opposed to you doing a virtual open house, what are your thoughts on conducting myself? I guess we'll come back to that question in a few minutes. So again, I'm gonna go show them some of the last features of the home, so some of the broad features, and then I'm gonna, at the end, say, hey, as I mentioned, if you would like a private tour, please message me. I'm happy to schedule one of those for you right now. So give me one second. I'm gonna turn this off and go back to the other room. How do we do? For those of you who can see via video, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, weird, awkward. Um, so, so again, the, the, the tips there is I would make it personal. I would go between facing them and facing me, showing the house, showcasing the features as you would any other home. Remind them multiple times throughout, if you would like a private tour, please message me. If you would like a private tour, please, please hit this chat button. Um, and then at 2.15, I would go back to my list of people uh, I would go back to my list of people that private messaged me, give them a call, shoot them a message saying I'm available now, and they might want to see the kitchen a little bit more or the backyard a little bit more or the basement a little bit more. Can you again discuss the new form for showings again? I logged on late. I just got back from a showing appointment. Uh, if you logged on late, I don't want to go back, 
Uh, this video will be available to you in about 20 to 25 minutes. We will sit, well, how long? So, 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 so this video will be available to you by, by tomorrow morning latest. We will have an email out today with the forms, with the acknowledgements, with, with, with the procedures. This video will be available for you by, by tomorrow morning. The Zoom video will be available tomorrow morning. I just recorded Michael. Um, I just recorded Michael walking around the office showing the virtual open house. So that video will be up on your Rockstars page by 4 p.m. today. So again, there's two videos. She did a video of me actually doing the tour that'll be on your Rockstar page, but the video of the Zoom call will be available by tomorrow morning. Uh, if a, a client is opposed to you doing a virtual open house, what are your thoughts on them conduct conducting one themselves? Um, no problem with that. I, I think uh, you would want them to, not to conduct the open house, but perhaps to create the video uh, that you can then use and post to a Facebook page, things like that. My concern with the consumer doing it themselves is, um, is they might say something that they shouldn't say. They might say something that could be considered discriminatory or a violation of some of our rules and regs. So I would just make sure we, we are careful. Can we use a GoPro camera? I've got a GoPro camera. I use it on vacation when I'm cliff jumping or swimming underwater. Uh, I don't think the quality of the GoPro is great. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, yeah, I would not recommend, Ian, absolutely right. I would not recommend uh, a, a, a buyer to interact directly with the seller. We think two people might be necessary for quality purposes, without a doubt, Lisa. That's why I had Emily follow me around and videoing me as well. You're gonna be able to see the way I did it on my phone versus the way Emily did it. And, and it very well may be worth two people, one with a camera and one without. Katrina has a cool camera that, that moves with you as you move. Um, that is called, uh, um, it, it, it's this very cool fancy camera that holds your phone, um, but, uh, but I, the smooth, thank you Katrina, it's called a smooth, a smooth move camera holder. I just couldn't figure out how to use it in a short amount of time. Um, can we make it interactive with buyers who also sign up? Yeah, of course, make it as interactive as possible. Uh, you know, this is a new way to show it. I was talking to a, a brother of mine that's in the medical field. And they've been doing a lot of things with technology in recent years. And his comment to me is this is a great opportunity for real estate agents to, to, to up the way they use technology as part of their home showing process. So all this technology has been coming. We know it's been coming. It's just coming real fast and it's here right now. What's that? So, question about what editing app would you use to edit it? If you have an iPhone and you take the video on your iPhone, which most of us has really good quality cameras on our iPhones, um, go to iMovie, you can edit it for free there. If you have an Android, um, I would just upload that video, Google it, I don't have an Android, so I would just Google where to upload videos for free and then go there. You could also use YouTube. The problem with YouTube that I'm finding is it takes hours for the video to be finally edited, um, while iMovie takes only a couple seconds. So Android users, I would search what is the equivalent to iMovie for Android users, and then go from there. Try to get as many free apps as you can. There's a lot out there. So, so there's a lot of questions as to whether or not you use Zoom or Facebook Live for this. The reason I'm talking about Facebook Live is you want to spend a couple of days marketing this event like you would any other open house. You want to do a couple of days building up momentum to it with, with Facebook ads and sign riders um, and emails. So, but by, by getting everyone to, to, to gear into your Facebook page or your business Facebook page from two to four on Tuesday um, will allow you to build up the traffic to one location there's not easy ways to do that with Zoom, whereas Facebook has some marketing that you can do to pull them into that environment. And, and again, a Facebook Live would make that an interactive experience. Um, and what then happens with it, especially if you do it through a business page that you can boost that video afterwards. I remember Jeremy Goolish, the first time he did this a few years ago, within like three days, he had over 2,000 views on that video of that interactive open house. So when you can show your seller you had 2,000 views on an interactive open house, gives you much more meaningful content because again, even when you stop it, that video still lives on. So again, our, our suggestions here is making it interactive through Facebook Live because you could also use that as a marketing vehicle. Ian, you're asking questions about title searches. Um, we're gonna be sending out multiple texts uh, on a training class tomorrow morning. I am doing an interview with Luke Tyler uh, on what's going on with title and COs and the ability to get homes closed. 
He's been spending the last two days getting that done. As a quick answer to your question, the only place title searches are a problem right now are, are Essex and Hudson counties because they're not available online from an indexing standpoint. So you can only physically go in to get them. So again, I, I, I hear of no issues getting title searches done. Um, if, if a title person needs to go physically into the town, while the town is saying they're closed to the consumers, they are still have limited access hours for people in the title industry to access the town. But, but, but again, we're gonna come back to that tomorrow morning um, and, uh, and we're, we're gonna have a session. Uh, I'll confirm the time today and send it off to you via text. Vimeo is a great way we can edit videos um, for both Android and iPhone. What are we doing now? Because we are getting so many listings as we ask the owner with us to tour first to give them a listing price. Say yes. Yes. I know who that is. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other burning questions. We, we, we tried our best to keep up with the group chat. Uh, again, the person, the new agent looking to preview uh, or shadow an open house, Let's not worry about that right now. Um, let's not worry about shadowing right now. Right, what we're trying to do right now is create an environment where we can still service our sellers. Um, new agents, we will come out with training with you, command, position yourself through command, doing Facebook ads to your sphere to help you build your business. Um, right now, let's just keep our, our let's just get um, through the point of being able to do some servicing our current sellers. So this really is an environment where we can support the shadowing at the moment. Let's just focus on getting our videos done of our sellers open houses. So whoever asked, uh, Karen, you said, how long should the tours be? My opinion is I would do a tour of the entire house and then I would do one of each room individually because you know how people are lazy. They don't want to watch the entire video. So if they just want to see one room specifically, I would take videos of that room and label that room, but then do the whole house also. I'm just, I'm just putting some antibacterial Purell on the mic as I pass it back and forth to Emily. Um, the tour, I mean, honestly, that tour should be about 10 or 15 minutes. You drive all the excitement to that, um, about 10 to you know, 15 minutes at most, um, and then do a lot of those one-on-ones afterwards. Um, anything else? <laughs> I've been watching the chats, pretty funny. All right, guys, this was a quick introduction. How many people do we have? We had 182 people join us today. I'm hoping that you found this uh, informative, helpful. So, so, someone called me yesterday, uh, one of my business partners, and said, hey, where are you getting content on virtual open houses? And my response was, um, I'm kind of making it up as I go along here. I've had a lot of conversations with agents that are doing some level of this. I spent the last four days talking about what works, what doesn't, best practices. So, so this conversation today came from a tremendous amount of research, consultation, and interaction with a lot of people. All of our documents came with a lot of conversation with attorneys uh, and people with boards of realtors to make sure we're putting together the absolute best practices we can. And we're going to continue to put together best practices in this very quickly ever-changing world we're living in right now. Again, I want to remind you, our number one goal is to keep you and your family healthy. Our number two goal, two goal is to provide a safe and healthy environment for our buyers and sellers. Um, and if all that goes well, we'll still make money in the process. But again, for me right now, health comes before money. Um, I hope this was helpful, informative. Thank you for being here. We'll get the videos out as quick as we can. Um, those four market centers I mentioned earlier, you're getting an email shortly about office operations. We will have a general all call for all four of those market centers at 9 15 tomorrow morning. So again, look at any email you just got from me um, or you will be getting from me regarding uh, the change in office operations. All right. Zoom stock just went up 12 bucks during this call. Thanks, Christopher. And we will be using for tomorrow morning, marketcenterzoom.com will be tomorrow morning. Have a good one. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.